Hey vape fans, you asked and you shall receive. Today I'm going to teach you how to build a stovetop coil. Alright, so some of the things that you're going to need today to build your stovetop. Alright, um, I do these a little bit differently than a lot of people online, so you're going to need some needle nosed pliers, preferably with the little grippies inside there. You want those to hold onto the wire. Um, you want a very small diameter screwdriver, so I'm not sure what this is, but it's around a you know a twenty six or twenty four gauge maybe. Um, ah, take that back. Probably about a twenty two gauge I'm thinking about it now, but something small diameter, so that's what you're gonna use to make your first loop. Um, as always you're gonna need your wire cutters, a little bit of wicking material, I got some rayon here, um, and then your wire. Today we're going to be using this 24 gauge, um, just regular old canthal. So let's dive down and I'll show you how to build this sucker. Alright, so uh, the first thing you want to do after cutting off your little uh, strip of wire, and honestly you guys you only need about maybe five, six inches of this stuff. Um, you don't need a whole lot. So uh, first thing we're going to do it's really important that we get this as tight as possible. We're just going to make one wrap um, on this little screwdriver, and that's just going to get our stovetop started. So we're going to go ahead and make a wrap. All right. What we end up with is this little guy. This looks like a little, uh, just one little wrap on there, and that's the start of our stovetop. So. In order to start making this look more like a stovetop, we're going to use our pliers here. We're going to hold that loop just like that. Okay, I'm going to take this short wire, and you can see it goes under this other wire here. We're just going to bend it straight down. Okay? So now what we have is something that looks similar to that. Let me see if I can get an angle for you. There we go. So it's just kind of like a little flat uh, wrap. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take that, uh, that, that loop we made and we're going to put it in the very end of the pliers. We're going to grip down real nice. We're going to take our long lead here and we're just going to start making a circle. Remember how I said I do this a little bit different? This is how I do it differently. So I just wrap, uh, spin the pliers around, grab both the wires that you just wrapped and I just keep on going. One after the other. One loop right after the other, just like that. This really helps to keep your coil nice and even. See, I'm not getting very much uh, space between those wraps. That's the beauty of doing it with the pliers. You don't get that space. So, we'll just add a few more wraps here. Like I said, you want the, the pliers with the little grippies in there. This is, it really helps when you're grabbing a hold of this coil to have them uh, on the pliers. It helps grab a hold of that wire and hold it steady. Since we're using 24 gauge, um, we're only going to need uh, maybe three, three to four, depending on your style. If you like a little bit warmer, um, go three. If you like a cooler vape, then I would probably go for using the starting point right here as a reference. So right where you started that first wrap, that's where you're counting from. So so far now I've got three full wraps on there. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna do four today. So I like I like it to be a little warm, but I also like you know I like the I guess that's what I like. I like it to be warm. I don't like it, I don't like it to be hot or, or too cold or anything like that. So um, we're going to do four. I'm just taking my time here, making sure that everything is nice and tight and lined up. Alright, 
So on the end of your uh, last wrap there, you'll notice how there's quite a bit of distance. Let's flip it over here for you. There's quite a bit of distance between this lead and this lead now, and that's perfect. That's where we want to go ahead and grab the coil here. And like we did with the first one, we're just going to bend it straight, straight down. So you have both those two leads facing straight down. You have yourself a nice little stove top there. Let's so get a look at that. Everything's nice and uniform. Looks really nice. So now, all you got to do, just like with any other build, you take your favorite RDA, whatever you're putting this into. RDA is definitely recommended. These don't work too well in tank, rebuildable tank style atomizers. So we want to make sure that we're using the right piece of hardware with the right coil. Now what I like to do is I like to use the last end here. So the last lead that we pulled down. I like to put that one on the outside. Just like with any other coil, one lead in the other, or one hole and one lead in the other hole. Pull this and you might need to bend it up over the lip depending on uh, which RDA you have, but sometimes the coil won't clear, so you just need to kind of push it up over it. So with these coils, we want to go ahead and leave some space behind the coil um, from the post because that's where our wick is going to go. It's going to go right down in there. Um, we're going to be doing what's called a rain cloud style wick today. So um, the majority of the wick is going to be up here over the post, over the coil. Um, with some wick going all the way to the base, touching the base, and then covering that whole back end of the coil there. And the reason we're going to do that, uh, we'll explain when we get when we get to the wicking. So we'll just go ahead and tighten our coil down in here a little bit like that. You want to be careful when you're tightening these because just the act of tightening them can cause them to kind of distort. So you want to make sure you do it nice and slow. Sometimes you can even take your pliers and uh, just hold the coil just like that while you're tightening. All right. Go ahead and clip our leads off here. Let's put it back around. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and form this coil a little bit. So let me see if I can get it in frame. There we go. We're just going to kind of pulse it a little bit and get it nice and warm. Now as you pulse, the hot spots are going to go away. Um, the stove tops aren't, aren't like your typical micro coil where you want to squeeze them together. Um, this is more of just heat and letting the heat do the work. You can kind of take your pliers in there and form it a little bit if it got deformed while you were tightening those post holes, which happens a lot, so there we get a nice coil. Everything's lighting up real nice. So I'd say we're good. Okay, so now we're going to wick this bad boy. Um, and again, we're going to use a rain cloud style wick. So again, nothing going it through in the middle of the hole here. Uh, we're not doing that. We're going to go all back in here. And the best way to do this is just take your time. We don't want anything too tight back there. Uh, if it's too tight, the juice isn't going to wick properly. It's not going to flow. And you don't want that. So we got a little wick here. We're just, just kind of forming. Sometimes a little bit of uh, juice on the wick will help. It kind of act as an adhesive, as we all know. I'm just going to kind of shape it and push it in between these two posts here. And make sure that it's touching the coil on the back. And if there's no saturated wick on that coil when you heat it, what's going to happen is one of these spots here is going to get hot. Um, a lot of things, or a lot of times, we don't realize that our juice actually helps cool the coil and keep us from uh, getting hot spots and things like that. So typically if you're finding that you're getting a hot spot or a burnt hit, that's th that's going to be the culprit. Um, you don't have coverage on your coil or, you, you know, obviously you won't, sometimes you don't just have enough juice on your coil. A lot of things that contribute to a dry hit, but that's one of them. 
So again, we're just going to tuck our coil, keep shaping until we get that hole back into the coil, nice and covered. And by the way, this is this is one of my favorite coils to build. Uh, just the way it is, it's going to be pretty low resistance. So for uh, the cloud chasers out there, it's a big bonus. Also, you know, there's a pretty good amount of surface area there, so the flavor and all that is also going to translate through. So I'm going to give it a little fire here. Yeah. Perfect. You should be getting that kind of outward um, kind of the, the vapors going outwards like that and that's because uh, it's escaping through the middle of the coil there so uh, that looks like it's working pretty well all right it's time to see what uh, what the resistance reading is make sure that we are vaping safe here sorry we forgot in the last video so we're gonna make sure that we do it in these uh, all future videos so we'll go ahead and uh, switch her on, see what we got. It is 0 0.30, maybe 0 0.31, so pretty low. Um, make sure you guys want to be using safe batteries with this, uh, 30 amp EFS batteries, um, at least. Um, a lot of you guys got the VTC4, VTC5s, those work fine. Oh, see, there we go, 0 0.31. Uh, but yeah, there she is. Alright, big fans, thanks for watching. I hope you uh, learned something from that video. Hope it was enjoyable. Um, next video, it's going to be the same thing. Uh, we're going to do a new poll. So make sure that you check that out um, and get your uh, opinion heard. So uh, until next time, thanks for watching, guys. And I'm going to have a vape.